Hello everyone, and welcome to McMaster University's Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about the power of nuclear medicine and how radiation is saving lives. When you hear the word radiation, what other words come to mind? Well, it's not unnatural to think of things like danger or harmful, however, in this video you will see how radiation in fact plays a major role in treating diseases and helping patients all around the world. So to start, what is radiation? Radiation is a form of energy that can travel through space in the form of waves and or particles. Radiation can exist in many forms like visible light, as in electromagnetic radiation. However, nuclear medicine takes advantage of ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is a form of radiation that can travel through matter and actually has enough energy to remove electrons from atoms, thereby ionizing them. A common source of ionizing radiation is radioisotopes, which are altered atomic elements that have uneven amounts of protons and neutrons that decay and emit high amounts of energy. This energy comes in many forms like alpha particles, which have high amounts of energy that do not travel very far in matter, and often comes from heavier elemental isotopes like uranium-235, radium-226, and plutonium-238. Beta particles and positrons, which have moderate amounts of energy, which travel further in matter and comes from elements like technetium-99, cesium-137, and potassium-40. And electromagnetic radiation, like gamma rays, x-rays, and uv rays, which can travel much farther in space and matter, but vary in energy. So now that we've gone over the basics, let's look at some of the ways radiation is used in the field of medicine. The first and most common use is for diagnostic imaging, which includes the use of radiation to image certain anatomical and physiological parts of the body in order to diagnose different diseases and ailments. There are different pieces of technology that can do so, such as commuted tomography scans, or CT scans, which can image the anatomy of a patient's body, as well as positron emission tomography scans, or PET scans, which can visualize various physiological processes within the body. Within the past 30 years, these two technologies have been combined to create the PET-CT scan, which combines the functions of both scans, allowing for easier and more accessible diagnostic imaging. The general procedure for this entails an injection of a radioactive substance into the bloodstream, and depending on the nature of the chemical, will have a higher affinity for certain areas of the body. The PET-CT is then able to detect this radiation in the body and produce an image like the one shown here. A great example of this is fluorine 18 FDG, which is a glucose substance labeled with a radioactive form of fluorine. This can be taken up by the brain and imaged to examine the brain's consumption of glucose. This is often used in the early diagnoses of many brain diseases like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, seizures, and other mental health disorders. The second and more recently developed use of radiation in medicine is radiation therapy. This is where radioactive substances are used for their properties of ionizing radiation in order to treat diseases in patients. A very common example of this is brachytherapy in the treatment of cancer. In this procedure, radioactive pellets, which usually contain alpha particle emitting isotopes, are surgically implanted into the tumor. Due to the high energy radiation that alpha particles emit and the fact that this energy does not travel far in patient tissues, these pellets are able to kill cancer cells, stopping tumor growth without killing any nearby healthy tissue. So as you can see, nuclear medicine as it stands today is able to help treat and diagnose many patients with diseases in some very unique ways. However, as radiation remains a topic that is poorly understood by the public, the use of it in medicine often leaves people and patients wondering, how safe are these procedures? It is questions like these that Dr. Joseph Zick, McMaster University's Director of Health Physics and Senior Health Physicist, answers every day. As a health physicist, Dr. Zick's job is to evaluate the safety of various procedures involving radiation, calculate appropriate doses to patients and dose limits for workers from radiation, as well as implement nuclear safety regulations for workers that are constructed by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, which is the governing body of the Government of Canada for radiological safety. The Commission regularly enforces radiation dose limits for employees. For example, 
The radiological dose limit that a nuclear energy worker can receive in one year is 50 millisieverts, a millisievert being a unit of dose of radiation. There are also dose limits set for specific groups of individuals, like pregnant nuclear energy workers and members of the public. However, among health physicists like Dr. Joseph Zick, it is widely accepted that dose limits do not and should not apply to patients receiving radiological treatments, as the benefits patients receive from these treatments greatly outweigh the minor risks these doses of radiation pose to human health. For example, in the United States, over 100,000 people are diagnosed with a type of lung cancer called non-small cell lung cancer every year. Oftentimes, patients used to be diagnosed without the use of radiation and prescribed surgery for the removal of this cancer. This surgical procedure is associated with a 6.5% mortality rate, which risks the lives of many of the patients. However, with the use of PET imaging using F18 FDG, it has been calculated by many health physicists, like Dr. Zick, that this method of diagnosis saves the lives of over 2,000 patients every year. Thus, the benefits to health through the use of PET imaging is much higher when compared to the estimated risk associated with radiological doses from PET scans received by the patient, which is on average about 10 millisieverts, which is still well under the dose levels associated with physiological harm. So that concludes our video on the field of nuclear medicine and how radiation is saving lives every day in many unique ways. For more information on the CNSC and nuclear safety in Canada, please visit nuclearsafety.gc.ca. We hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.